Hello everyone uh, and welcome to the OS Master Map Highways uh, Routing and Asset Management webinar. I am Diana Moraru and together with my colleague um, Philip Gang, uh, we will be covering a deep dive technical explanation uh, of the structure of this product of highways uh, portfolio uh, and also on a feature by feature basis. So um, let's start. Um, in this slide you can now see uh, the three products uh, of highways um, and that is roads, routing and asset uh, management and paths. Um, as I said, today we are discussing about routing and asset management um, and in terms of um, features um, contained in this product, you can see now uh, with the with a purple um, sort of color, pinkish, um, the different types of features you have for routing uh, and asset management as well. Um, and also these features are um, then relating back to the uh, sort of road network, ferry network, um, and also um, other networks such as the 10T roads and the open roads. Um, so um, just to give a bit of a, an overview of um, RAMI and how it links back to um, to the roads and the paths product. You can see now um, on the screen a diagram uh, and then on the top of um, the screen we have um, the basically the new elements uh, existing in RAMI uh, which weren't in ITN for example so this is all new and it's um, authoritative information. So you can see the rights and restrictions, uh, the advisory information um, and the asset management um, information. The asset management information is the one um, I, uh, I was saying is authoritative information. Uh, also, we have a feature which is in rights and restrictions, uh, which uh, belongs to um, local authorities um, and it's provided to us uh, for the RAMI product. Uh, again, uh, we will be discussing in detail each feature. Uh, you can see also on the bottom of the screen the linear network mod model, so the roads network, and then uh, with uh, sort of uh, on the left side, you have the, the path uh, features. Um, the path, you can see uh, in the screen as well how the road network and the path network are connected through these two features at the bottom, the connecting link and connecting node, um, essential to, to make the, uh, basically the connectivity between the two. Uh, but let's um, discuss a bit more on the on the Rami um, side of things now. Uh, so I was mentioning uh, earlier the three big um, categories uh, of features. So we have rights and restrictions on the left with um, the pinkish color. Um, in terms of rights and restrictions, we have um, features such as access restriction where you would have information uh, if access um, is restricted. So for example, uh, no entry information. Uh, then you have turn restriction, uh, it, where you would find information about um, maneuvers that might be restricted on the road. So for example, no turn. Uh, you don't have restriction for vehicles, uh, where um, you can find information on physical characteristics um, that are restricted. So for example, no vehicles over eight tons um, or such. Um, then you have the feature I was mentioning earlier, highway dedication, which is uh, uh, coming from authoritative data, so uh, from local authorities, and it gives you information on the type of user that has access to that road, uh, if it's, for example, restricted byway, uh, and so on. Um, and then in the middle, you have the advisory information, uh, hazards and structures, um, in terms of uh, information you would find here, uh, for hazards, you would be advised if there is a hazard on the road. So, for example, a Ford um, for structures, you would be advised if there is a structure on the road. So, for example, level crossing, um, and that's the advisory section. And then, um, thirdly, um, the, again, authoritative information, the asset management information, which is maintenance, reinstatement, and special designation. Uh, uh, for maintenance, you will find information on who is responsible for maintaining uh, the road. Uh, the reinstatement is information on how the road should be restored. 
And finally, special um, designation is um, information about, um, let's say, specific details you should be aware on the road. So if it's uh, the road is traffic sensitive, um, so specific information you should know about. Um, so again, uh, these are uh, the three categories um, of features in routing and asset management. Um, and they all link back and relate to the other two products in highways. Uh, so um, in terms of uh, relational aspect um, within the RAMI product, um, you can see now on the screen, um, this is again uh, to show you the relational uh, nature of the features uh, and how they reference back to each other. Um, you can see on the top of the screen, we have um, the uh, restriction uh, information. Um, so they all, uh, for example, restric restriction for vehicles refers back to uh, uh, either a road node or the road link. Um, turn restriction and access restrictions will always uh, reference back to the road link. Uh, highway dedication, on the other hand, can reference back to both road link or street, um, and then hazard and structures uh, can uh, they reference back to the road link or the road node, so they can manifest um, in different ways. Uh, we will discuss this in a bit more on how this referencing happens. Um, and then on this um, bottom right uh, corner, you can see the asset management information, green maintenance, and special designation. They all reference back to the street. Um, so this is how they relate to each other. Um, and now just to explain a bit more on how this uh, uh, network referencing happens, I will hand it over to my colleague, Phil, uh, who will explain this in more detail. So over to you, Phil. Thanks, Diana. So just before I carry on with this one, uh, we didn't mention questions at the beginning. If you do have any questions, you should have a panel or a, a box somewhere where you can actually type them in. Um, we'll, we'll we'll get the questions as you type them in. So depending on whether they're really urgent or not, we'll either answer them then and there or um, at the end of the session. Um, as Diana was saying, we'll have a look at the network referencing now. Um, generally speaking, within the product, there is no um, reference to. For some reason, this is not advancing. Just give us two seconds. We we'll have to figure out why it's not advancing our presentation here. There we go. Um, so. Generally speaking, within the product, we reference um, other geometries. So the routes and um, or the roads routing and asset management information layer does not actually hold any geometry in itself. There are a couple of exceptions to that, but mostly we use the features that are already in place via um, the roads network. Um, the ba most basic type of reference we have, and this, we'll, we'll dissect this diagram you're seeing on your screen now, but because this is far too um, complex to read right there. And the most basic reference that we can use is a standard network reference, and this will reference an entire street. And you can see it on your screen at the moment, so all we're giving here is the USRN of a street. And this will be used by special designations, reinstatement and maintenance, so the um, asset management information layers. The next reference we're going to look at is slightly more complex, but it's still used in the same feature, so it's still used for special designations, reinstatement and maintenance. And this is a network reference location, and really all this is is a partial reference to a street. And here we use multiple types. We can either use a start and an end point along the street. We can use a line or we can use an area. And you will only ever get one of these three. So either the combination of location start and end, a location line or a location area. But you, what you always get is a location description of what the location is or what has been entered into the National Street Gazetteer. Um, the type of geographic reference that is used is entirely dependent on how the information was entered in the National Street Gazetteer. So certain things may be entered as areas, others as lines, and certain things will have start and end points on them. In terms of um, examples to this, so here we have an example with a start and an end point populated. And for the points, we do actually provide the geometry of that exact points but that is snapped um, to, the, um, to the street feature if it's within 10 meters of the network. 
We also provide a, so this is the example for the location line, and all this is is a line that in most cases will either intersect completely or partially this read feature at this location. And as you can see here, again, we give the line string ID and the, um, the actual line geometry. And finally, we use the area, and this can be, for example, polygon area of a neighborhood where certain things are not allowed or where certain things should be done in a certain way. The next type of reference we use is a link reference. And the link reference is used for complete road links. And we'll explain what a road link is later anyway, but they're the basic foundation structure of this whole um, of the network. And actually, if you want to know more about them, go to the roads webinar, which um, should be available on our website soon. Um, the link reference is used for turn restrictions and structures. And it provides a few things. Uh, crucially, the element, which is the reference to the actual road link being referenced but also an applicable direction. And applicable direction, um, in order to understand what that actually means, you have to look at the road link that's referenced because the applicable direction is relative to the digitizing direction of the road link. In order to get the digitizing direction of the road link, you would have to see which way the uh, coordinates are ordered. So in, in very simplistic terms, left to right or right to left, although three or uh, two dimensional space, they can be all sorts of different directions. And here we provide in direction, in opposite direction, and both directions. So it's fairly self-explanatory once you have the road links in front of you with that. And we also have an example of this one. So here we see a traffic calming along the area that we can see in the road with the red lines here, so the red dotted lines. Now, each of these black lines between the red dots is a road link. So here we have one road link that where this applies. Um, when we look at the elements, so we reference the, ref uh, the network, the road link element here, and we then also say that this is applicable in both directions, so it gives us both directions here. We then also have a one-way street. Now, one-way street will generally only be applicable in one direction of some sort, and here we see it's meant to be applicable in the digitizing direction. You can just about make out an arrow, hopefully, by the red dot, which is the digitizing direction indicated. And here, as I said, the applicable direction is indirection, and again, we have the reference to the actual element. And this is this is just another slide that shows you that data in a bit more um, or a bit more readable way for the one-way street. The next type of reference we use is a multiple link reference, and this is used for turn restrictions and hazards, and it's. It's very similar to the link reference, but it's slightly different in that a hazard can stretch over multiple links, but a structure generally will be covered by one link, hence why there's a difference in those two. But the turn restriction will almost certainly, or will in most cases, cover two links, but actually we sometimes only have one link where it applies. And here we have, again, the applicable direction and the element. The element is the easier one of the two in that we provide the element reference. The applicable direction is a bit more tricky in this case because potentially you could have, as we have here in the example, in opposite direction and in direction. And really, the only way you can see how that actually looks in the data is by looking at the road links themselves and realizing in which way they were digitized. So it takes a bit of looking at the data in detail to realize how these, um, these restrictions manifest itself which just emphasizes you need the roads network data in order to apply this data successfully. And just to get a graphical example of that, so here again, we have the digitizing direction of all the links applied with the arrows and the individual links in between. And we show a turn restriction here. And in this case, for the two links, we have one that is applicable in direction, the other one that is applicable in direction as well. So here we are not allowed to turn right from the first links onto the second link. And we know this because it's applicable in direction. The links in this case are ordered um, within the product. So these restrictions should make sense. So this first link would be the first link in the product. This second link would be the second link in the product as you're looking at it. We 
also provide a point reference. And the point reference is used to place features at specific points along a road link, but not necessarily coinciding with a road mode. And this applies to access restrictions, restrictions for vehicles, hazard, and structure. And the reference is, well, basically the, the reference base reference we use again is the road link in this case. So as the element, um, we will use the road link, the GML ID of the road link. Again, we provide the applicable direction. And again, this is down to the digitizing direction of the referenced road link. We provide a at position, and this is the length from the start of the link in meters. So it's basically the distance from the start of this link, again, in the direction of digitizing. And finally, we provide an at position geometry, which arguably is slightly easier to digest sometimes, and that's a simple point reference. And as you can see down here, so here we have the element, we have the applicable direction again, we provide the meters from the start of the link, and then we provide the position geometry, which is a point geometry. And just to look at a practical example of this, here we have a level crossing. And when we look at this, it's applicable in both directions, um, naturally being a level crossing. It is at position 5.6 meters along the link. Crucially, that is along the link, not along the road or the street. It is purely that one link that we're looking at. Um, in this case, we have a access restrictions that is only, or an access restriction that is only applicable in one direction. And in this case, it's in opposite direction of the digitizing direction. So the digitizing direction in this case goes from top to bottom for this link, but the restriction is only applied coming from the bottom to the top. Um, and the links aren't to scale in the graphic, but here we've said that it's at position 0.3 meter from the start of the link again. And here we just see again how this reference would look like if you wrote it out nicely. And obviously this will be wrapped in XML identifiers or GML identifiers rather when you find it in the data. The final type of reference that we use is a node reference. And this reference is a point that coincides with a road node via the GML ID of the node. So it's very similar to the point reference we just covered. Only the point reference, the reference is a point along a link, whereas the um, node reference references an exact node on the network. So it's slightly easier to digest, maybe. Um, it applies to restriction for vehicles, hazards, and structures. And it provides not only the reference to the nodes, but it also provides the actual location as a point geometry. It will contain a link reference attribute as well. And this lists the GML IDs of all road links that are connected to the node that are affected by this feature. And hopefully this gets a little bit clearer when you see the graphical examples, but you see below the table here a representation of what the GML might look like. So again, we have the element reference, which in this case would be the road node. We have the location, which is the point. In a way, you can use this to sanity check the road node and whether this is actually the correct node for what you're looking at. And you have the reference to, in this case, two links that are affected. And when we look at the graphical example for this, here we have a Ford, and the Ford in this case applies to all four links. So all four links here are crossing and are affected by this Ford. But here, for example, we have a bridge that runs over another road. Um, this would be indicated in the roads network by grade separation. If you want to know more on that, please have a look at the roads network webinar. And here we have a restriction, which is a height restriction that only applies to the bottom part of the road. Now, arguably, there is probably also a restriction up top for weight restriction, but that's a separate restriction and only applies to the top. So the way we, me we mention this in the data is to say the links that are affected by this are only two links, in this case, the links leading up and escaping at the bottom. And again, this is just how it would manifest itself if you see the whole um, the whole thing in nicer print. That concludes the network referencing. I appreciate this was a fairly quick whirlwind tour of it. Um, however, it becomes quite clear when you're working with the data how it's actually referenced when you look at a couple of examples. 
and you have the slides and these examples in the slides are really useful to just get your head around it if you want to revisit it. So Diana is now going to explain the common attribution across all features before we dive into the individual features for you as well. So over to you. Thank you, Phil. Um, so um, now we will be discussing a bit the common attributes you find across all features uh, in uh, highways, uh, and many of them have been inherited from the Inspire Transport Network model. Um, again, um, this is applied to, to each feature within OS MaxMap highways. Um, and you can see on the screen you have as well the GML ID, um, which is quite important as this is the one where you will find the identifier of each feature. Uh, so if it comes from OS, you will have a TOID, uh, generally OSGB is followed by 16 digits. Um, if it comes from the NSG, uh, you will have a USRN followed by um, eight digits. Um, again, this is um, the identifier which helps you relate features to each other. So it's crucial for that. Um, then you also have an additional identifier, the actual um, identifier uh, attribute that comprises of a code base um, for um, GR GRC. And you will ha also have the URL representing the ID. Um, so this will be without the prefix uh, I was mentioning earlier. Uh, so in here, it would be without the OSGB or the USRN uh, prefix. And the final identifier is the um, actual Inspire um, ID, which comprises of a local ID uh, without, again, without this is without the um, prefix um, I was mentioning earlier, so without the OHB or USRN um, stuff. Uh, and uh, you also have a namespace, which will be uh, generally uh, ordnance survey, um, but um, that's um, the identifiers you can find on each feature. Also, um, you will have um, some life cycle information you can see on the top right as well. Um, and the primary one is the begin lifespan version um, uh, that uh, gives you information that whenever a new version of the, the feature exists in the product, this date will be updated uh, with the publication date of that feature. Um, in lifespan version, um, you can uh, also, uh, this will actually be found in change only update orders. Um, and also, there's additional life cycle information in, in this box as well, uh, which is um, valid from and valid to. Um, you can see on the bottom, sorry. Uh, these attributes are talking about the feature in relative terms of the actual real world. So this is not when the data changed, but uh, actually from when that feature started to exist uh, in the real world. Um, an example, um, of valid form could be for a street feature, um, and it will give you information on that street where that was actually built. Um, so we are populating that for the street feature um, as we have source information for that feature. Um, and that concludes um, the common attributes across all features. Uh, and now um, I would like to move on to the different data types we have in the in the Rami product. Um, so um, the first, type, the first type I would like to discuss is a vehicle qualifier. Um, this um, data type defines the types and the uses of vehicles that a restriction can apply to or restrict. Um, so for example, each feature in the rights and restrictions sub-theme will contain the attributes inclusion uh, and exemption, which are of data type um, vehicle qualifier. Um, this slide also shows you the and the three attributes that is made up of uh, and their sort of code list values uh, and that is um, the vehicle um, we can see it in here the use and the load um, the vehicle contains information on the vehicles exempt from the restriction so for example no access except for buses um, you then have the use uh, which gives you information list of uses exempt from the restriction and it uses the use type value, so the one, the blue box uh, on here, um, and it's used to describe exceptions to a specific use. So for example, you can have no entry except for access. Um, so this is the type of values you will find populated uh, for the use. And then we have also load and the type of values populated in here. Uh, you can see them on the blue box here. 
uh, and basically this, this is a list of um, loads considered to be dangerous and exempt from the restriction. So for example, loading and unloading except for uh, abnormal loads, uh, animal loads, explosives, and so on. Um, please note that also you can have uh, multiple values populated in the same time. So you can have dangerous goods, um, articulated vehicles, and escorted traffic that can be applied simultaneously to the same feature. Um, so we can have a values from each um, each box. Um, so that's the, the the vehicle qualifier data type. Uh, we then um, have the temporal uh, property type. Um, the routing and uh, asset management of product holds information on restriction, which generally um, apply for a temporal period. So that's when we use this type of data uh, information. Um, the different temporal properties um, have been categorized, and um, you can see them on the three main one on the screen now, um, and that is uh, the name date, a date range, and day period. Um, temporal properties are applied to four, four features uh, in routing and asset management, and that is um, access restrictions, highway dedication, turn restrictions, and special designation. So the temporal properties will be found uh, within these features. Um, also, I would like to mention that name date, um, for example, is um, specific to NSG um, and it can be applied to something such as special designation. So local authorities might use this type of format. Then you have the date range, which actually is uh, specific to ordnance survey. Um, but again, this is just different type of format to illustrate the temporal period, which um, the um, restriction is applied to. Um, and just to give a bit more detail on each section, I uh, will start with the date range, which is, as I said, um, specific to OS. Um, the date range gives you the range of dates, um, um, the time restriction is in place for, um, and it has, uh, as you can see now on the screen, um, you can have a start date, end date, or it can refer to the month, and you can have a start month day or end month day. Um, it has also uh, a type of um, date range type um, values, code list values, which can also be found um, at page, uh, um, let me just check. It's also in the technical spec document with the full list of it can be found on there. Um, date range. Um, it should be around page uh, 49 in the technical spec document. Uh, and it includes information, as I said, as you can see on the screen, on it, whether if it applies to the date or the the month, um, and it has uh, a multiplicity of zero to one. Moving uh, on on to the this hierarchy, uh, we also have the day period um, type of uh, temporal property, and this is a restriction which applies on a specified date. Um, the day period also has a day property uh, type of um, value. Again, have a look in the technical uh, document at page um, 49 and 50. Also, um, I would like to mention for the name date, uh, which, as I said, is a named month or period. Um, this time interval applies to. This also can be found and has a code list of values, uh, usually months or seasons, and can be found at page 48 in the technical spec document for Rami. Um, but, um, as you can see again, uh, the date range and day period are a bit more. Um, they're a bit more classified. They are, have a different level structure, uh, so they have a multi-level structure here. A day period as well is, has time period, name period, or named day. Again, for the full list um, of, uh, of the type of values you will see populated here, I would recommend, um, again, the technical spec document, which gives you the full list. Uh, the day period um, usually gives you uh, information such as uh, name day, name period, um, and time period. And usually, um, again, they have a multiplicity of zero to many. Uh, so have a look in the document to see the full list uh, and the way they manifest in the data. Um, from these three, um, time period actually 
is even further um, ramified. So um, you have um, time range or you have name time. Um, name the time range again can um, have two sub sub themes of start time and end time. So you have again a, a different level of of uh, mentioning the temporal property. Uh, for the again for the full list, uh, please go back to the technical specification document, and you have the different values uh, populated in here. Um, the time range uh, also can be found at page uh, 50, I believe, in the document, um, and it's gen generally a multiplicity of one. Uh, so um, please have a look for the full details in the technical spec. Uh, but this is um, this is generally the ramification and the, the way the temporal property is structured. Um, even though it's a, a bit complex, this is how the real world is as well. So this is how the, the restrictions are applied in the real world and the local authorities do that. So it's just a format of um, data to apply this to. Um, so um, with that said, um, I would like to um, now uh, hand it back over to Phil um, for the rights and restrictions. Um, so over to you, Phil. Yes, thank you. So I'm going to first talk you through the rights and restri restrictions aspect of the product. Although if you are following this talk in the technical specification, you will notice that I will skip over the highways dedication. And that's purely to do with the fact that it's the only aspect of rights in this part. And um, that will be done by Diana again at the end. So initially we will talk about the three restrictions and then we'll have a look at the highways dedication as a right. The first of the restrictions that we're going to look at is the access restriction. Now, generally for all of these restrictions, they can all provide a list of inclusions or exemptions for certain vehicle categories. And this can either be a single vehicle class or multiple vehicle class. And with all of them, if you can read the diagram, then good, otherwise you just have to take my word for it. You will have the inclusion and the exemption attribute. And it's this vehicle qualifier that basically gives you that. Um, the, the vehicle classes can be multiple, so it could either be, for example, HTVs over a certain tonnage, under a certain tonnage, vehicles of a certain length or not. So it's best to look at the technical specification for it. You can find all the information on that in there. The rights and restrictions as well are simplified by a hierarchy, and you can find this in page 20 in the specification. And in very simple way, without going into another diagram in too much detail, a one-way street has implied restrictions underneath it. So along with a one-way street, we will normally have no entry or access prohibited um, signage and restrictions. We will likely have mandatory turns in place, and we might have no turns in place as well. However, because they're all a result of this one-way system, the only restriction we would show is a one-way system because everything else is implied underneath. Um, the reason we've decided to do this is because it's it's modeling the effect of the restriction on the real world, um, but not necessarily the real world view, but it's the effect that we really want in this product. So that's why we're doing it this way. In terms of the access restrictions specifically, um, we have they are generally legally prohibited access. And you will usually find that they are indicated by regulatory signs on the ground. We reference to them via a point reference, as mentioned earlier. And we show two specific attributes, um, specifically um, the restriction itself, which is the nature of the access restriction as provided by the access restriction value. And this could be various in the, um, so for example, private or a toll road, for example. We provide the attribute traffic sign. Um, again, this is a mandatory attribute, same as restriction, and it's a free text description of the traffic sign that indicates the restriction. And we also provide the optional attribute, which is a time interval, um, which shows when this restriction applies, should there be a time interval that applies to it. The next one we're going to look at is the turn restriction. Um, again, all of the common attribution that Diana mentioned is applicable to this and also the inclusion and exemption that I mentioned. And turn restrictions restrict vehicle maneuvers. So for example, forbidden turn or a mandatory turn or a head only. 
They are only explicit restrictions in this case. So if they're captured in the data, they're always explicit uh, restrictions, which means they are either signed or marked on the road. We do not capture implicit restrictions, which are based, for example, on lane splitting around a traffic island. The turn restrictions are referenced via links and multi-link references. And the only additional mandatory attribute we have here is restriction, which is the type of restriction as provided by the turn restriction value. Um, again, we have an optional attribute of a time interval, which would be populated if there is an interval that applies to this restriction in general. The final restriction we're looking at is the restrictions for vehicles. And restrictions for vehicles is a restriction based on physical dimensions of a vehicle. So either the length, width, height, or the weight. It is referenced via a node or a point reference. And in addition to the standard attributes we always have, we have three mandatory attributes, mainly the restriction type, which gives the type of restriction. So for example, maximum length or maximum height. We have a measure attribute, and the measure attribute gives the metric value of the restriction in meters or tons, and it will be indicated in the value whether it is meters or tons. And we also give the source of measure, and the source of measure is important in the sense that it tells us whether the data that's in the measure attribute is taken directly from a street sign or whether it was calculated from imperial units on the street sign. Um, which is where the optional attributes come in. So measure two would give an imperial value of a restriction in inches, which is never populated for weights. Um, and it would only be populated if the sign itself was in imperial units. We also give a structure attribute as an optional attribute. And this will detail any structure that relates to the restriction. So for example, a gate or bridge over a road or a barrier. And there are others. You can see the full list, again, in the technical specification, the code lists. And the final one is we have an optional attribute of traffic sign. And again, this is a free text description of the traffic sign where this applies. And on our pass over to Diana again to go through the highways dedication and some other information as well. Thank you, Phil. Um, so uh, the next one up is highway dedication. Um, Highway dedication is um, information that comes from um, authoritative data, uh, and it should provide, um, it actually provides an indication of the type of highway user who has access to that particular section of the highway. Again, I would like to make a note here that the highway dedication value is only an inf inference uh, of where a public right of way exists, uh, and therefore is not a, the definitive record of public right of way. Um, that is a definitive map held by the relevant authority. Um, so a highway dedication feature will reference back to the path network um, and the road network um, to the network reference and will reference either uh, a road link or um, a street feature or a path link. Um, so for more information, again, on the network references, I will advise you uh, to see chapter number three in the RAMI technical spec document. You can also see um, the document attached to the um, webinar window in the handout section. So uh, you can even have a look now if you want. Um, so, uh, however, I would like to just now discuss a bit more on the attribution uh, and how highway dedication is manifested um, and the information that you have contained. Um, first of all, I would like to say that highway dedication can be, as, as I said, uh, applied to street, uh, both street and road link. So um, it can be both. Um, why do we do that? We do that because, uh, for example, we reference the street as this is what happens in the NSG, uh, and that you can retrieve the view of the highway dedication for the entire street rather than for each um, elementary street unit section. Uh, we reference the road link for the same reason. Um, so the reason we made it also have its own geometry, so it can have the ESU geometry. Um, usually um, that is um, explained because we wanted to keep it the same as the source uh, data we have. Um, there was a risk that by making an attribute um, of the road link, we might end up moving the start and end of these dedications. Likewise, if the uh, elementary street units do, do not match a road link, 
then the dedication would not have made it out um, maybe in the data. So that, that is why, that is the reason it applies um, to road link and street as well. Um, and um, does if it does it always reference both road link and street? Um, no, it can happen that um, it's only referencing the ESU, um, the elementary unit when it has been matched to a road link, um, and, and it can reference both the street and the road link. However, if it's not matched um, to our data, to the road link data, then we only reference it back to the street. Um, so coming back to the attribution side as well, uh, I would like to mention the dedication attribute you can see in the box, in the orange box on the bottom uh, left, um, dedication has a dedication value called list. You can see it with the blue box as well. Um, this is basically the giving you again an indication um, rather uh, of the type of highway dedication that applies to the section of the street. Um, uh, it has a multiplicity of one and the dedication value, the code list uh, can be found. Um, so the code list can also be found at page 51. Um, the, it can have information such as uh, byway open to all traffic, um, pedestrian way or footpath. Um, it can be all vehicles, uh, restricted byway. Again, um, this is giving you information on the type of user uh, that has access to the street. Um, and generally, these codes conform to the legal categories as defined in the Highway Act 1980 and the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000, with the exception of no dedication or dedication unknown, which is one of the um, values in our, in our list at page 51. Have a look for the full list. Um, in the technical spec document. Um, so um, again, um, also uh, you have other attributes such as um, a national uh, cycle route, uh, which should give you an indication if the dedication is subject to a formal cycle classification. Uh, you then um, have um, a quiet route, work prohibited or time interval. And these, um, three attributes in particular are not mandatory attributes. So depending if we receive this data from the local authorities, this is populated or not in our, um, in our product. It's an optional type of attribute. We also have obstruction attribute for highway dedication, which should uh, give you an indication, an indication if the um, dedication contains a physical obstruction to vehicles. Um, this is a Boolean type of attribute. Um, then we have planning order attribute, which should give you an indication if the if a pedestrian planning order, for example, applies to that dedication. Again, this is a Boolean type of um, value populated. And of course, you have the geometry um, type of attribute that gives you the geometry that represents the central line of the dedication. Um, and basically that summarizes um, also, I didn't um, actually mention the works prohibited can give you an indication uh, if the dedication has a traffic regulation order prohibiting any works in the highway at, at all times. Uh, the time interval is usually the time period to which the dedication applies. But again, this depends on the type of data, the source data we have. So it can be populated or not. It's, a, it's an optional uh, type of attribute. Um, and then the quiet route is usually giving you an indication if the dedication is subject to a quiet route or not. It's a Boolean type of um, attribute. Um, so that um, basically uh, um, concludes the rights and restriction uh, sections in the, in the RAMI product. Um, further on, we have uh, the, next, um, the next type of um, features, so the next sub-theme in RAMI product and that is um, the advisory information section. Um, these um, provide additional information relating to the highway that affect uh, the traffic movement. Um, so these are generally um, hazards um, and structures. So let's have a look um, at, the, um, at the diagram, um, at the flow chart, sorry, um, for this um, type of features. Hazards are generally locations which are dangerous and um, caution should be taken to ensure safe travel. Um, examples can include the Ford, um, 
dangerous um, bands, uh, se severe turns, the firing range, and so on. Structures, um, you can see it on the right side as well. The attributes are built features which relate to the highway. So examples uh, include barriers, bridges, and um, tunnels. In terms of attribution, um, I would like to mention here for hazard, um, well, I would like to say it all is usually signed um, using the warning sign through a red triangle, uh, as you may know, and it references in the product, the hazard references back to the roads product um, through the node reference, point reference, and multiple link references. So for more information on the network referencing, uh, please see chapter number three uh, in, the, um, in the technical spec document. And also you can refer back to our slides here where Phil did a great job explaining in detail how it's manifested both in the code and in the in the geometry in the data, um, and then um, explaining a bit more um, on the attribution hazard. Um, uh, an attribute I would like to emphasize is the hazard attribute, which has a hazard type value. Um, the value can be found also at page 52 in the RAMI spec. And it's basically just a classification of the type of risk that applies uh, that may impact the choice of route or where caution should be observed. Uh, then you have um, the structure um, attribution, uh, which also has um, the structure um, type of attribute, which gives you information on the type of build feature. Uh, for the code list here, we also you can also found it at page 52 in the RAMI technical specification document. Um, and it has um, information. You can also see it on the screen, on the on the blue box here. Um, you have a long list of values populated. Um, possibly you can have populated uh, such as barrier, bridge over road, gate, level crossing on route, fully barriered, um, and so on, tunnel, uh, structure, traffic calming, and so on. Um, so with that, um, I can conclude the hazard and structure um, section. Um, so that's the advisory information held in the RAMI product. And further on, we have um, the asset management uh, section, which I would like to hand it back over to Phil to start explaining uh, with the maintenance um, and um, the other features existing. Over to you, Phil. Yes, thank you. So the asset management, as the name suggests, um, the information within these uh, features relates back to how we or how you can manage the asset or how the asset can be managed, the asset in this case being the roads and streets of this country. And we'll start this with the maintenance um, actually, or the maintenance feature rather. Um, the diagram is quite complex. It's probably easier to look at it in the technical specification. You want to see the diagram as a whole. Um, the maintenance feature boils down to providing information where the maintenance of a specific part of the highway is a public expense or not. And it, it basically says who's responsible for something, but it does not provide an indication of the ownership. So it doesn't tell you who owns the highway, but it tells you who's responsible for maintaining it. It references um, back, via, or back to the roads network via a network reference uh, or a network reference location. So we'll reference a whole street or a part of a street. And in terms of mandatory attribution, here we have the highway authority. And this will be called the response, or this is a responsible authority type of attribute. Um, it's called highway authority, though, and it consists of the authority name and the identifier within it. We have a maintenance responsibility um, attribute, and this will give a type of maintenance value, and this could be maintained at public expense, prospectively maintained at public expense, and a few others. And in the diagram, you see this in the green box, if you can read it, or it will also be a green box on this diagram in your technical specification. And um, we also give a partial reference as a Boolean value, and this is simply a a flag saying true or false, um, true if it is a network reference location, in other words it is a partial reference to the network, or false if it is a full network reference, so it references a whole street. So it just makes it slightly easier to understand the data if you're looking at it. And we also provide an optional attribute, and this is maintenance authority, and this will be populated if the section of the highway is maintained at public expense. 
and the maintenance authority and the highway authority are linked in a sense that, for example, if the maintenance authority is Highways England, then the highway authority will also be Highways England. But if the maintenance authority, for example, is Transport for London, then the highways authority, for example, could be the City of London. So although TfL or Transport for London would maintain the highway, it falls within the remit of City of London. So it, it's slightly, slightly difficult to get your head around when you first hear it, but if you think about it, it sort of makes sense. Um, in, in simplified terms, then the maintenance authority maintains the highway or is responsible for the highway um, if it is maintained at public expense. And if the maintenance responsibility is not at public expense, then the maintenance authority will always be null, so it will always be empty. That concludes the maintenance aspect of the um, management information. So I'll hand you back over to Diana now for the reinstatement part of it. Thank you, Phil. Um, so reinstatement, um, again, this is authoritative information um, and de defines the standard to which, for example, the road must be restored to following uh, opening due uh, to works in the highway as defined in the new roads and street works um, act specification for the reinstatement uh, of openings in highways. Uh, and that is in England and Wales, and for Scotland we have the New Roads and Street Works Act uh, 1991 specification for the reinstatement of opening and roads. Uh, reinstatement feature will reference back to the road network to network reference and will reference usually a street feature, um, the same as uh, maintenance and special designation, so they all reference back the street feature. Uh, again, for more information on how this happened, you can see chapter number three in the technical spec. For attribution um, and the reinstatement uh, feature, we have reinstatement type. Uh, the reinstatement type gives you information, um, again, on the type of um, information, um, the different classification uh, you can find defined in the, in the acts, in the policy documents. Um, the full code list of, um, of these values can be found at page 52 in the RAMI technical spec. And it has, um, this is actually an inspired code list as well, um, and it has values such as maximum double axle weight, um, so it's a maximum weight uh, per double axle of a vehicle allowed at transport element, um, or you can have maximum height and maximum length, and so on. For the full list, please see, please see the technical spec document. You also have the uh, partial reference attribute, um, this is a flag to indicate that the um, reinstatement future, uh, feature partially references a street, for example, and this is a Boolean type of attribute. Uh, and with that, um, I think I can I sort of summarize uh, the attribution for reinstatement. You can find it here. Uh, of course, there's a reason for a change, which is one of the common attributes we discussed in the beginning. Uh, and then further on, I would like to hand it over back to Phil to explain uh, the last feature um, in RAMI and in asset management section and um, the special designation, and then we will wrap up. So over to you, Phil. Yes, thank you. So the special designation is the final part of the asset management information, and special designations advise of additional information that relate to the carrying out of works on a highway. And this could be a whole host of information. So it could be, for example, what's underneath the highway, above the highway, next to the highway, close to the highway, or indeed it can be information about an event that's taking place on or near the highway or the highway itself having a relevant or special significance. Um, the data quality for these special designations at the moment is very dependent on the population and frequency of the reporting by the local highways authorities. So whilst at the moment we have a population of anywhere between almost fully populated and very good quality to hardly used and quality being quite poor, this does improve over time and this will improve over time as we're working closer and closer with the highways authorities on this. In terms of the reference back to the network, um, this is done via network reference or a network reference location. So again, it's either a full street or a partial street. And um, there are two mandatory attributes, aside from the um, usual attribution we have on everything. And this will be the designation feature, oh, sorry, designation attribute. 
and this will be a special designation type value. And this could be a whole host of things. And actually on your screen, you might see this big blue box. You can also find this as a code list with detailed explanations of what these things actually are in the technical specification as well. And just to, to read out one or two of them. So for example, we might have emergency services routes. So this highway has special significance of some sort. We have special event or we have speed limits or we have street lighting. And it's, it's intended as additional information. It's not necessarily the only information. We also have a partial reference Boolean value again. So if we're using a network reference as a full one, then this value would be false. And if it's a network reference location, this value would be true, just to give you an indication whether you have to do more spatial joining or matching anyway. We also optionally have a contact authority value. And this will simply be a authority to contact for further information. And generally, we would argue that if you're using this information for anything and there is a contact authority, please contact them beforehand because there's likely that likelihood that there's more information available that may not be shared in this data. We also provide an optional description attribute. And this is a free text box, effectively, for additional information about the designation. So this could be information about the event. This could be information about a specific emergency service route only being applicable um, for certain, well, not necessarily certain times, but certain situations, and indeed anything that is put into a free text box. And finally, we also provide the time interval as an optional attribute again, and this will be the time that the designation applies to. So is it only a certain month, certain week, certain day, or is it recurring, for example? That concludes the special designations, and with that concludes the features of this product. Thank you, Phil. Um, so um, as a final um, slide, we have the routing and asset management relational model. Again, to show you how all the features presented and discussed today relate to each other. Uh, you can see the arrows and um, the sort of text um, at the top of um, the arrow and then the bottom of the arrow. Um, and in this case, um, the attribute at the arrowhead is the primary key. And then the attribute at the base of the arrow is the foreign key. So if you have, uh, for example, access, access restriction, um, this will uh, reference back to the road link um, through um, the primary key um, uh, ID. So that's the road link toid. Um, and the foreign key would be the element, uh, which is um, the um, sort of the reference of the access restriction. Uh, so this is how we, they all relate to each other. Um, again, this is a relational product, and it also relates back to the road network. You can see the um, dark purple um, sort of uh, road node, road link, and street, uh, which are road network elements. Um, so um, hopefully um, this uh, was a good um, deep dive explanation of this product, um, and I would like to encourage if you have any questions um, either now or later on to please uh, give us a shout uh, and thank you very much for being patient today with us um, and um, looking forward to see you for the paths webinar uh, thank you and if you have any questions